there we are. Thank you for this introduction. And I'm very pleased to be here today and give this talk about uh, strategy and guidelines. Uh, I will first start with a picture. You might find this symbolic, uh, but it fits to the title of the Congress, Care Today, Cure Tomorrow. About 40 years ago, the US government funded cancer research in the US with $1.6 billion. And since that, the treatment possibility of cancer has really improved dramatically in these 40 years. I believe we are in a similar situation when it comes to Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. Uh, I think the most important uh, value uh, of the strategy, the dementia strategy, the national one, is that the French government in 2007 decided to fund the third French uh, strategy with a similar uh, number of, of, of money, 1.6 billion euros. So I hope that we in 30 years from now can see maybe not a cure for dementia, but a better treatment than we have today. This is in short overview of my presentation. At first I will talk about dementia strategy or plans, which are made by politicians. They set goals, what we can achieve. But more important maybe is to develop national guidelines then we can tell the doctor, the healthcare personnel, how to work to achieve the goals in the dementia strategy. So I think we should relate the two things together. We can use national guidelines to promote the strategy for, and implement them, what is not, not always the case. So I will short tell about the background for the strategy, which country have a strategy, the common goals in many of the strategy, but above all, the difference in how to achieve the goals, because they are very different. I'll give you some examples. And then jump over to the, to the guidelines. Uh, actually, it was also my Europe in a Paris meeting in 2006, 11 years ago, that proposed that uh, all countries in Europe should uh, develop national strategies for dementia. This was after France had done this in 2001 with the first plan and the second plan in 2004 and then they launched the third plan in 2007-2008. Uh, and this is the situation today. Uh, all the countries uh, colored in red have national plans and national strategies and the two countries in yellow, Spain and France, have a general strategy on neurodegenerative disorders, which include dementia also. And as you see, uh, there are more countries in the western part of Europe having a dementia strategy, but the eastern parts are coming. And here are all the countries. Uh, some has only launched one uh, plan, uh, which has expired. Uh, other countries, like Scotland, has now the third plan, and Norway has the second plan. As you see, France has the fourth plan. So there are some countries continuing the plans uh, over a long time. And I think this is very wise, because uh, things take, take time. It takes some time to implement new strategies and to reach the goal. This is hardly done in three years. So you maybe need 10 years to have a new mindset how to care for people with dementia. I think reading all the strategies is a bit difficult because uh, in English there are only short versions uh, and many of the long versions are in Italy, Italian, in French and so on. I don't speak those languages, only German and, and English and Norwegian of course. And as German don't have a strategy I cannot read there strategy. But I think all are very aware of that these strategies should highlight ethical principles as respect for autonomy, human rights, dignity and justice. And the main goal for all plans are to deliver a high quality care throughout the course of dementia, from the first day to the last day. And this should be done regardless of ethnicity, 
gender, age, place of residence and income. And I love some of the slogans because they are pointing of some very good principle in the strategy. This is from the English strategy. Uh, and you all know this slogan, living well with dementia, that many of you use in your daily work. So the main aim is to, to improve the quality of life for people with dementia. And that is living well with dementia. But I appreciate very much uh, the other slogan in the English uh, strategy, putting people first. Because that says me that we should use a person-centered care approach in delivering care for people with dementia. And I also see this Belgium in the second um, strategy has something similar slogan. Forget dementia, remember the person, putting people first. This is a person-centered care approach. In our uh, strategy, we have the slogan, small is beautiful, pointing at how we should care for people in nursing homes and small home-like units. Then to the common aims. There are many different aims in the different uh, plans, but these are in general in all the strategy in some way. Uh, and as we all know, raise the general awareness of dementia, reduce the stigma, uh, and, and develop dementia-friendly communities, or friendly communities, I would like to call it, is one of the, the main aims. Then, of course, promote a timely diagnosis and disclosure it. Uh, promote a high quality post diagnosis supporting care, uh, which is very important in the Scottish uh, strategy. Develop a care system that delivers a chain of services in a seamless manner throughout the course of dementia, which is very important but very difficult to achieve because that is the most costly um, aim you have to see to that there are sufficient care and very good care throughout the whole course of dementia. In promote and improve support of family cares, uh, promote education of professional family cares, and of course speed up research. These are the common in, in most strategies. And if you have read the, the WHO, Global Dementia in Action, they are engaged in most the same priority areas, but have put numbers on it. So to speak, that in eight years, 75% of all countries that are members of the WHO shall have a dementia strategy. This is a very strong message that we believe in these strategies. And within eight, hours, eight years, 100% of all countries will have an awareness campaign. And that 50% of people with dementia and 50% of the countries should have a diagnosis. And 70% of the countries should provide support and training for care on families. And 50% should collect data on core dementia indicators. So, so they are very similar, this global action plan. But we should remember these are plans made by stakeholders, politicians, and not by healthcare personnel. So those who have made a plan should not um, implement it. Uh, that's uh, the task that we should do. And now we face some problems, or shall I say challenge others, because we talk about money. We all know if you want to implement a new care system we need money and we need people, human resources. If we don't have the human resources, we don't have the money, it's very difficult to convince people that we should work in another way. And some of the national strategies are very um, um, precise in giving instruction which actions should be taken and what should not be taken. But other strategies are not that um, descriptive. They talk about overall uh, goals and not how to do it. And some actions are funded and some are not. Uh, the best example is, of course, France. They have 44 actions and each are funded. 
and you can read in the paper how much they are funded with the exact kind of uh, sum of money. Uh, that is not the case with any other plans in Europe. So let me take some example. Uh, as our Scottish friends are very uh, um, keen on, we should create a post diagnostic support for all people with dementia for at least one year, maybe for the whole course of dementia. Uh, and these are described in many of the plans, and they have different names of these post diagnostic supporter. Could be a link worker, a dementia advisor, in the French plan, single point of contact. Well, the point is that every family and every person with dementia should have a name of a person they can call, they can ask for advices. And this person should navigate them to the services that they need in the local community. And as I tell you, in the French plan, this is a kind of giving instruction how to do it and what they should do and at what time they should do it. So in the third plan, they said between 2008 and 2012, every patient with diagnosis dementia should have a single point of contact that should contact them, assess the treatment and service and follow them up. And it was funded by 0.7 million euros per year for a regular follow-up and then there were local trials for 4.6 million. Uh, I, I cannot see, maybe in the new Danish plan there are similar figures for what each action should cost. Uh, the UK-England strategy is also very detailed with seven actions that should be carried out. And it's also described how they should carry out all the 17 uh, actions. But as far as I can see from the plan, um, not all actions are funded. Uh, they should be funded uh, by finding money in the system and integrate some of the action in the existing system in England. But it was very uh, detailed, outlined. So this is my headache uh, in all the plans. I, I have to say this, and this is how to deliver high quality care according to the plans. Because words are used like to develop integrated service, to promote client oriented care, to develop a strategic framework within the existing local services. And I, I think this is meant so that we should find a way to give better care for people with dementia with existing services without no extra funding. And I'm afraid that then the implementation will not be that good. Another challenge with implementing plans made by politicians uh, are we have to evaluate it, we have to know are they really implemented or are they not? And, and I'm sorry I cannot speak all the European languages, but I cannot see that all the plans have been evaluated regularly. How, how, which, which impact had the plans on the health and social services in a European country? And not to speak about the effect of the strategy, which of course is difficult to measure. Um, let me just give you some simple examples of facilitators from my country. We have some action that were very simple, 100% funded, and result was marvellous. And these were the two programs for educational program for family professional cares. Uh, within these eight years, 80% of all Norwegian municipalities run educational programs for carers. 15 hours program. And the goal was to educate 6,000 health personnel, and we educated 22,000. This is totally funded. And then we have a less successful action by providing daycare activity in daycare centers for people with dementia. And the goal was to have places for 5,000 people. We didn't achieve that goal at all because it was not funded. So one way is my suggestion that we can uh, improve the implementation of national strategy 
is to develop guidelines related to the strategy. We should put question in the guidelines that we can answer that is related to the strategy. To, to develop guidelines is a big work, it takes a lot of time, and it's based on all possible research in the area. So the last two years I have read a thousand of papers uh, together with my colleagues in Norway because we would like to uh, outline guidelines uh, related to our, our strategy. But it is results from research, clinical practice and the preferences of people with dementia. So that should also be in this work with developing guidelines. And how can we do this? Uh, well, as I said, we could uh, ask to put questions forward in the guidelines that we want to answer by use of research papers, clinical practice, and people with dementia's own experience. So, for instance, uh, which are the best procedures to diagnose dementia? Which are the best tools to diagnose dementia in different stages of dementia? Is there any evidence for what is the best way to do this? Then it should be feasible and it should be valid. Then we can do this and, and tell the GPs, tell the doctors all over Europe, this is the way you should do it. And it's feasible, it's cheap. And one other example is the use of antipsychotic. That's, in my opinion, all too high in all European countries. Even in my countries, where we use 20% of all nursing home patients have an antipsychotic for years. 10% of those living in home have an antipsychotic for years. I know the number at higher in some of other countries. So how can we do this? Well, taking examples from Finland. In Finland, they have in their strategy the procedure that all health personnel in primary health care should screen for dementia if they have a client. If someone need help in primary health, social health care, there should be automatic screening for dementia. So they have in their guidelines uh, um, research which screening tool could be the best to screen for dementia. And they come up with a Sera battery, the American Sera battery. So if you want to receive in home care in Finland, regardless of what reason you are screened for with a Sera battery, and you have a below a threshold, you are free to the special health care for diagnosing. In Norway, we have another procedure. Uh, all doctors in Norway can diagnose dementia, and we know that some GPs meet people with dementia in a moderate state of dementia, and then we have a basic assessment for them, and then we have extended accession in special health care, and a very specialist assessment uh, in also in special health care. And then we can go into the literature to see which tools are valid for an early stage of dementia, a mild stage of dementia, a moderate stage of dementia. And we should find those tools that are feasible, that the doctor will use, and that are cheap for the community. So lastly, to uh, my fight against antipsychotic. This is a personal fight. Do we have any evidence for using antipsychotic in agitated person with dementia in a severe stage? Uh, we have recently gone through eight meta-analyses done the last year, and we kind of found very strong evidence for the use of this kind of drugs. Uh, they all conclude they had modest effect on agitation, aggression, and as well as psychotic symptoms. And one of the studies also did a review uh, of 18 random control trials to see if there are any effect, is modest effect in acute state, will this last for a long time? No, it doesn't. After six months, Klaibala didn't find any effect of these drugs uh, after six months. And then we should see this uh, together with the possible serious side effects. And this is a large uh, population study, studying more than 40,000 old people with dementia uh, and studying the risk of any serious side effects using antipsychotic less than 30 days. 
And this was three to four fold compared to those not using antipsychotic. So I, we could use guidelines like this. So in the Norwegian guideline, use of antipsychotics, we are very reluctant to, the, to recommend the use of such drugs and recommend rather to implement person-centered care approach in all nursing homes as a basic ID of how to care for persons with severe dementia. So, conclude, I'm very happy to see that many European countries have developed dementia strategy after France did this the first time in 2001. Very thankful to Alzheimer Europe that has this Paris Declaration in 2006. I think this will contribute to a better care, but we have to uh, follow the implementation in each country. We have to evaluate the plans and to see what is implemented and what is not. And if important acts are not implemented, we should ask for a second plan, a third plan, a fourth plan. We cannot stop with one plan for three years. And I think it's very important to tell the politician that we need money to implement and, uh, new care services. And then I hope we can combine the development of national guidelines for dementia and the dementia strategies so that we can, uh, the two kind of documents can work hand in hand in the future. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>